This is disturbing. We've got an office of attorney general is arguing that a constitutional right should not be upheld. And they are arguing that the, the, the general assembly and the secretary of state do not have a duty to present a correct version of the Tennessee constitution. So this is just really, really astounding to me that, that the office of attorney general would make these arguments. But I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you uh, uh, what what they filed today in the in the Tennessee Court of Appeals. So I'm going to put uh, two two documents up here. Uh, this one on the this one on the right is is my uh, appellant's brief, and the one on the left is the appellee response. Um, so first thing I'm going to show you this is the this is the appellee. This is the appellee response. And uh, you can see this was uh, by Herbert Slattery III. He's the, the attorney general. And then there's uh, Andre uh, Bloomstein. She's the solicitor general. And then Janet Kleinfelter is the deputy attorney general. So I'm, I'm guessing these are some <laughs> pretty hard hitters uh, from, from the Tennessee government uh, that are weighing in my case. Uh, here's the here's the first disturbing part is is they're uh, restating uh, my issues on appeal. Uh, so you can see here in, in item one, they're saying whether the trial court abused its discretion uh, in, in denying my writ of mandamus. And then they say, you know, in, in, in parentheses, petitioners issues one, three, five and six. And then uh, whether the trial court declined to rule on petitioner's challenge of constitutionality of judicial legislative rules. So when I do this, I go through an appellant's brief and I make notes like, what do I think is wrong? And so this was my hand notation on here. Uh, it's my big, terrible handwriting, but uh, they explicitly ignore the issues that I presented on appeal. And this is what attorneys do is when they don't want to respond to you uh, or they don't have a response is they ignore the issues. So uh, my actual, here's my actual statement of issues. Uh, was I denied due process as a result of gross procedural rules, uh, whether the appellees and their counsel can falsify evidence and make false statements to a chancery court with impunity, and they, they falsified evidence in my case, it's proven. Uh, whether uh, citizens have a constitutionally protected right to reform the government and remonstrate by address, and whether the, the government has a duty to hear and decide remonstrances, and whether Supreme Court Rule 10B, House Rule of Order 15, Senate Rule of Order 22, are repugnant to the state constitution and violate or uh, oppress constitutionally protected rights, whether the trial court uh, uh, was an abuse of discretion to involuntarily dismiss my case while, it, uh, it, while they didn't settle all of the claims uh, in my case. And, and most importantly, out of all of this is does the state government have a duty to present the correct version of the Tennessee Constitution. So right here, number six issue on appeal for me is whether the government has a duty to present a correct version of the Tennessee Constitution to the, to the public. And the actual Tennessee Constitution, Article 1, Section 23, the last phrase says, by address or remonstrance, meaning we have a choice that we can choose to address them orally, sit down, I have something to say to you, I have some complaints here, uh, or I'm protesting unlawful conduct of the government in violation of the constitution, and I'm going to address you. That is a constitutional right we have, or we can do a, a formal written protest in a remonstrance. That's a, that's a big issue. And let's go back, let's go back to theirs. Uh, they completely wipe out uh, whether the government has a duty and they, and they summarize it in here in, these, in this parenthetical reference, petitioners issues one and three. So that's a huge, 
that's a huge problem for me. Uh, as we go down uh, through their brief, uh, here's, here's another thing I have a problem with, is they say that, that John Gentry is a citizen and resident of Goodlettsville, Tennessee. I don't, I don't know, uh, uh, but what I think is that they're saying I'm a citizen and resident of Goodlettsville, Tennessee, uh, to uh, provide the court, the appellate court, the opportunity to say that I was not uh, asserting rights. And so I made a notation here. I'm, I'm not a citizen and resident of Goodlettsville. I'm a citizen of the state of Tennessee, and I'm a citizen of the United States, and I'm entitled to all the protections. And I have certain unalienable and protected rights as a citizen of Tennessee and as a citizen of the United States, as a citizen and resident of Goodlettsville, Tennessee, that provides me no rights. So that's why I think they did that. I'm going to certainly, when I do an appellate, when I do a reply uh, to any document that's filed, this is how I do it, is I go through and I identify, you know, what are the false statements, where are the lies, I make notations, and then I'll go down and, and write up my my, my, my document. Uh, here, they said that the petitioner's uh, petition of remonstrance was announced on the floor of both the House and the Senate. Well, in the Senate, it was announced improperly. Uh, it did not, it was not announced as a remonstrance or as a petition. It was announced in the Senate as, and I quote, notices and unfinished business available for inspection. That's what, that's what uh, Chief Clerk of the Senate, Russell Humphrey, did in the Senate. He completely uh, announced my remonstrance improperly in there. And that's one of the things I'm wanting is that it, it was announced properly and, and read at the table or allow me to present it. Um, I'm not going to go through all of this, but I, I want to give you guys an idea of what I work for. I don't know if you can read my, my scribble writing here, but this is verified. And so when I write that in, so they did a citation of the record here, uh, it at 597, uh, 98 paragraphs 10 through 11, I made a note to myself to verify, because I don't trust these attorneys. Uh, I always go through it and verify uh, what they have to say. Um, and then, uh, uh, this, this part here, petitioner asserted Tennessee Constitution Article 1, Section 23 and Article 10, uh, that respondents have a duty to present the type written form of the Constitution on the General Assembly's website. Uh, that's a lie um, that, that they're saying that I want them to properly present the type written version. No, I want them to correct the false version of the Tennessee Constitution. And this is tricky attorney language, you know, coming from, from, from Herbert Slattery, Andre Bloomstein, the Solicitor General, and the Deputy Attorney General Kleinfelter saying, I want them to properly present the typewritten version. No, I want them to correct the false version that they have where they unlawfully change the Constitution. Uh, and uh, respondents have a duty to, let's see, what did I... I don't know why I read that, why well, I underlined that. I'll have to go back and read it more. Um, so I had a mouse in here. They, they say that uh, the court observed that I had fully exercised my right. I was deceived by my government. My government said that I have a right to petition uh, for redress of grievances by address of remonstrance. And I have a constitutional right to address them uh, and so because of that constructive fraud by the government, I was not able to exercise my constitutional right. And you'll see, I make notes in here. I want to verify, and, and you've got to check these attorneys. This, this attorney, Janet Kleinfelter, she is absolutely corrupt. She has made false statements in the court. Uh, she submitted falsified evidence in the court. So when she writes in here and does a citation, I check every single citation uh, that they do. 
Uh, I'm going to see if I can get down. There was one. Um, you can see my notes through here where I want to go through and look at all of this. Um, well, let's see. Is this the one? No, that's not with it. I'm looking in where they're talking about the Tennessee Constitution. Um, right, I have, oops, sorry, I was deceived there. This is to say the government, no. Both have a right. I'm almost done here. Um, observe the air, shall receive. So these are all just my notes that I make in here. Um, just get down. Okay, so this is this is the one. So this is Herbert Slattery, our Attorney General. This is Andre Bloomstein. She's the Solicitor Attorney General, and Janet Kleinfelter, who's the Deputy Attorney General. And and they they're saying that the trial court also correctly determined that. The respondents, the respondents are the clerks and the speakers of both houses, that they have no clear duty with respect to demand that they post a corrected version of the Tennessee Constitution on the General, General Assembly website. And because respondents have no duty to display the Constitution, the trial court could not order the respondents to correct the version voluntarily posted on the General Assembly's website. Well, uh, she says that, that, that uh, uh, I, I provided no uh, statutory, no constitutional or statutory provision. That is a lie. The Constitution says that any, any person in office has a duty to uphold the Constitution. And it's also, I think it's Article 6, Section 1 and 2 of the United States Constitution that, that every person in office, judges, legislators, have a duty to uphold the Constitution. And putting out a false version of the Constitution is an antithesis of their oath of office by, by holding out a false version that deceives the people that usurps our constitutional right to address them, to orally present our complaint. That is a usurpation of a constitutional right. And so, yeah, they have a duty to uphold the constitution. But what I can't believe is we have a solicitor general, an attorney general, and a deputy attorney general advocating that it's okay to have a false version of the Tennessee Constitution held out to the people. This is extremely disturbing to me. And the last, the last part of this, that the Deputy Attorney General argued that a motion to dismiss is not a dispositive motion. And she thought she violated rules. And the last thing that she says in here, and I'm gonna get off this, this document, get get off my screen, Oop, get off my screen share here. Uh, the, the last thing that she argued is that, oh, well, there was no crime. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter that I violated roles, that I denied Mr. Gentry due process um, because he filed an amended petition. Uh, and it doesn't matter that I falsified a counterfeit version of Mr. Gentry's petition of remonstrance because, well, he filed a, a corrected version. This is the same argument as to say that, well, uh, yeah, that guy stole that car, but the cops got it back. So no harm, no harm here, the cops got the car back. So, you know, we're not gonna prosecute this guy for, for grand theft auto. It, it's, it is ridiculous. So. I just, I wanted to share with you guys tonight, uh, I, am, I am so, so disappointed in the Office of Attorney General arguing that it's okay to have a false version of the Tennessee Constitution out there for the people, that it is okay uh, to falsify evidence, that it's okay to violate rules of procedure, 
uh, and, and how they changed my uh, issues on appeal and try to summarize them. Uh, it's, it's deceit, you know, if they're, it's fraud on the court. Um, it's, it's deprivation, it's conspiracy to deprive due process. Uh, these are all federal crimes that are being committed by the office of attorney general. And since Herbert Slattery put his name to this, our, our attorney general is conspiring to deprive rights. Our attorney general is, is putting off his signature that it's okay for, for, the, for the Tennessee General Assembly and Secretary of State to hold out a false version of our Tennessee constitution. That's what Herbert Slattery is doing. And, and I have to say it, I think he's a criminal. I think that, that Herbert Slattery, our attorney general is conspiring to deny due process in violation of 18 USC section 241 or 242. And the same is true of, of Andre Bloomstein. You know, are they above the law? Probably. Uh, am I going to try to hold them accountable, accountable to the law? Absolutely. Uh, I will take this matter to the President of the United States, uh, to the United States Congress. Will I be ignored? You know, it, it, is the Republic gone? Probably. Uh, but I'm going to try. Uh, I am not going to accept an Attorney General, a Solicitor General, and a Deputy Attorney General saying it's okay for the Secretary of State and General Assembly to hold out a false version of the Tennessee Constitution. I'm not okay with that. And citizens should not be either. So uh, I, you know, I used to get angry uh, when, I, when I got stuff like this uh, because they wouldn't file it if, if they didn't think that the Court of Appeals was gonna uphold the decision. So all of this is just to, it's to create the appearance of due process without actually providing due process. Uh, it's all conspiracy to deprive rights under color of law. Uh, the, the, the state of Tennessee has clearly forsaken its Republican character in violation of Article 4, Section 4, that the United States shall guarantee every state a Republican form of government. So I, I used to get angry at this stuff. I don't. It's just, it's just making a record. It's gathering evidence. And, and hopefully at some point, you know, the people will unite and say, we're tired of this corruption. Uh, we're tired of these legal professionals making false arguments. Uh, we're, we're tired of our rights being violated. And, and when we come together as a people, uh, assuming that the United States government will not uphold the constitution, Oh, we're just in for more of the same and, and, and more unlawful conduct of our government. And <clears throat> we need to take a stand. So I just wanted to share that with you guys tonight. Thank you for taking time with me. And uh, I will keep you posted on this case uh, as it progresses. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you guys. Have a good night. <clears throat> God bless, Godspeed, and in God we trust.